And welcome to my beginner course for Ableton Live 9 for the absolute beginner. Um, been wanting to do this for a while. Uh, my channel has, uh, has been, the copyright strike has been uh, taken away. Um, so I'm in good standing now, so I can do long ass videos. And uh, with the release of Ableton 9, it, um, it's very solid. And uh, it's kind of the same as the one I did for Ableton 8, but I have a better mic now, and I want to go into more detail, and I'm slightly better spoken, and overall it's going to be a fun time. So, without further ado, uh, as my goal is to compete with a lot of these paid schools, uh, Thug Life, um, we're going to start. Um, so I guess, yeah, Ableton uh, is a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation. It's basically a program for making music. Uh, basically what a program for making music does, or what it should do, is record audio, uh, record MIDI, um, handle virtual audio instruments. Uh, they're basically extensions, uh, effects, um, and it should um, export uh, wave audio um, and it should play things in a linear way and it should be fun as well um, this class tutorial course is uh, geared for people coming from FL Studio, people coming from uh, Cubase or people that have no idea what's going on um, and I'll go through it and so don't let my default kind of template scare you. Um, Ableton is really good at routing audio and uh, it's really good. Um, it works well with uh, outboard kind of gear like the Virus TI, um, the Native Instruments machine and like other MIDI gear. You can uh, send and return audio. It can do all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, it's very positive I think. Um, it's uh, really good. So what I'll do is I'll just delete all these. I can always get them back when I reopen my template. When I hit new, I cut it. Uh, and I'll just leave that. So typically when you open Ableton, you'll have something like this or this and a MIDI track. Yeah, we'll do that. You have this and a MIDI track. Um, and you'll be like, okay, well, what do I do? It's kind of confusing, but not really. Uh, Ableton works like any other uh, creative kind of program, um, like down the line. It uh, works really kind of like that. Uh, you got your file menu up top here uh, for saving, opening, quitting. Uh, you're exporting right here. You can create and you have all your options and stuff like that. But what I want you to do is go to preferences right away. So what do you have here? So you have your uh, your look and your feel. Um, generally, I have my brightness up to 150, uh, just because just because I can kind of see it better because uh, I'm looking at my screen upwards. It's at an angle, uh, and it's kind of good for the eyes um, when there's like less of a when there's a kind of a higher contrast but keep your monitor setting low uh, and don't don't add weird colors like that because it'll mess up your eyes it doesn't look doesn't look neat uh, what you want to do is allow multiple plug-in windows um, and but if you're kind of an organization kind of guy you can hide them um, and what else to do uh, you'll go to audio. This is kind of important. Uh, depending on your interface, or depending if you're using uh, your onboard uh, audio from the back of your computer, or if you have a, uh, a complete Audio 6 or some other sound card, Fireface, whatever. If you have a Motu that doesn't work like I do, tragedy. Um, what you want to do is uh, if you if you have an interface, get the latest drivers. Use ASIO, uh, you're good to go. If you're on a Mac, use Core Audio. Um, you can kind of skip this step. It's the one of the only um, uh, good things about uh, 
producing on a Mac. Uh, so what do you want to do? Uh, you'll select, you know, your your audio device, ASIO. You know, you're good. If you have kind of outboard uh, instruments, you know, input configuration, yada yada yada. If you have uh, your speakers or headphones hooked up to the back of the computer, you want to go to a particular website and download ASIO for all. A S A A S I O for all. Type that into Google. Uh, you get a very very low latency uh, driver for that basically works for everything. Um, and low latency means if you press a key, sound happens. Right? There's always kind of a lag. Uh, with computers inherently, uh, there's, no, there's no such thing as zero latency. It's kind of like um, online gaming when there's lag. Um, it's kind of if you have like vertical sync on and your uh, your uh, graphics card is not powerful enough or not fast enough, uh, you get you move the mouse and then it moves slightly after. That that's basically that. Uh, d it doesn't really affect um, audio just playing but if you have a keyboard in front of you and you hit a key there's a delay and you don't want that uh, so ASIO for all minimizes that if you're using um, uh, if you're using uh, the back of the computer with headphones or whatever uh, core audio doesn't really have that problem I have a Mac too uh, but I use Windows predominantly um, if you have your interface um, you won't be able to adjust the buffer size. Uh, you're going to want to go into hardware setup and kind of do this uh, for the sake of stability. I have a higher sample rate. Um, you can go all the way to a sample is like a, a unit. It like it processes sound in chunks and then sends them out uh, to your interface to be processed or whatnot. Um, so it's like the bigger the chunks, um, the less strain on the bus or computer, basically. So that's that. Uh, consult to, uh, your documentation uh, to find the optimal um, kind of performance for your uh, audio card or interface you have directly in front of you. Um, if you are using um, the back of the computer, what you want to do select ASIO for all as the driver type, very important. Uh, I guess it would be your default device, sound device. Uh, then you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna go to buffer size and then uh, turn that on, give this a try, and then you turn on, you turn on your test tone, kinda loud. And then you, you turn your CPU usage up. You see the CPU maxing up there. So what that does is it simulates a high load uh, for your audio uh, card, your onboard audio, and it uh, tries to break it in a way. It, um, and you'll get dropouts, you'll get crackles if the sample rate's too low. So if you get crackles, if it's not a, a complete sine wave and you get crackles, you've probably heard that, you want to uh, up the sample rate, right? and then give that a try and then up the sample rate until you get no crackles and then that is basically your optimum uh, sample buffer size and that's simple really um, yeah and that's basically audio and that's kind of an important step uh, you'll be a lot less frustrated it's best to have stability over latency um, and that's always good to have stability uh, especially when you have a large uh, project file, you don't want it crackling. And if it is crackling, stop all audio, and then go into this option menu and increase the buffer, uh, the sample size, the buffer size, and you're good to go. So right now my latency is uh, nine milliseconds, um, which isn't too impressive. But um, I record uh, with virus, and I record um, kind of whatever. Uh, so I want a stable. Uh, the buffer size and I, I'll trade off a bit of latency for that you know you can always go in and move the MIDI clips around uh, MIDI sync anything you have like MIDI uh, if you got a MIDI thing um, or like machine or virus whatever uh, you want Ableton to kind of track that so it if you 
kind of move something the or that light in the upper right hand corner I'm moving my pitch wheel it's detecting uh, the MIDI movements and what MIDI movements is MIDI is uh, data that is sent through kind of a knob or a pad um, it's a value between 1 and 127 and Ableton uh, when it's tracking it it'll detect movement a movement in this so for like a keyboard um, it would say key 28 and 29 um, on and then off like on off uh, the velocity um, something called aftertouch since all this data just by pressing one key um, and that's uh, Ableton uh, receives that and sends that and MIDI is a standard that's basically 30 years old so older than me and it's a way for synths to talk to each other and I don't know anything has one on the back uh, if you have another tab open open uh, Google type in MIDI and you'll see the port it's basically a, a gigantic uh, port that um, you know with a bunch of tiny things and it looks like it was made in the 80s and it's still the standard to today um, also MIDI is no longer through MIDI cables MIDI is through your USB I don't have a USB cable to show you right now but you have Google open Google USB and MIDI can be sent uh, through that as well uh, and I have MIDI from machine MIDI from my MIDI keyboard over here um, and that uh, does the same thing it's still MIDI it's still the MIDI standard but it's sent over uh, USB which is more convenient um, and uh, more stable in a way and you don't get uh, kind of like drift or uh, your clock going weird which sucks uh, file folder uh, basically uh, you want to leave all this as is uh, installing VSTs uh, if you have a VST say it's like massive or whatever or whatnot um, you browse in the folder so let's see program file you install them all in the same folder and basically they're dot DLL DLL and they're extensions and what those extensions do are they're just an external synthesizer uh, that's not part of the host not that Ableton did not have anything to do with but it loads it uh, just fine and it can be an, uh, an instrument effect or a MIDI effect and you use uh, your custom folder and that appears right here right so all my plugins hooray um, and that is it for that we're not gonna be going over max I'm not a fan of max as of yet um, and saving your template uh, once you become more advanced you can want to have a template that you uh, open up and it's easier to get to work right away instead of creating tracks and dropping in EQs um, my template is rather large pretty much uh, that has nothing to do with anything that's fine um, yeah you're gonna you are you're gonna want to keep it as is yeah, multi-processor. I'm not going to click on that. You'll see my serial probably. Um, so you have all that, and that is your options. And it's very important. I'm going to be back with the interface. So, yeah, I'll be right back. Take care. Bye-bye now.